Welcome back to the Torque Test channel. Today we have all the main players in the cordless compact impact space. That's not to say there aren't other cordless options out there, and we'll test those too, but these brands we're testing today we think offer the largest range in size and performance from all the top brands out there vying for the best compact. In order of size, that's certainly going to include this rigid subcompact, which if you were to ask rigid, is in a category of its own due to its size, and it's hard to disagree with them there. This thing is absolutely tiny at 4.3 inches long. It's the only thing with a battery we've used that matches the air tool compacts we've tested. Here next to the smallest one, the Astro Nano, but it comes in even shorter than some of the other four and a half inch long air impacts we've tested. It's really in a league of its own there. We'll be testing it with the three amp hour octane battery since we've had the best luck with that battery on this channel and want to see if this tiny subcompact can compete with the high dollar compacts from Milwaukee, DeWalt, and Makita we have coming next because at $139, it's not only the smallest, it's the cheapest too. The R87208B is rated for 225 foot pounds, but that's of course breakaway torque or loosening. Let's see what it can do in our first test of three called working torque, which is an industry standard five second test. Here's that. One hundred and eight foot pounds. Well, that doesn't seem all that high at face value, but this is just our first impact on the first test of the day. To compare it to that and provide a bit more context, we'll be using the Milwaukee Gen 3 M18 compact impact and the DeWalt DCF 901 12 volt, which are no strangers to this channel. The Milwaukee claims it will hit 250 by the end of the day, and the DeWalt says 250 as well in what we're testing, but 400 foot pounds in their breakaway sort of icing on the cake rating. But for less coin too, about $149 versus around $189 for the M18. This Extreme 12 volt is the latest and greatest from DeWalt, only being a few months since debut, but when they do introduce a 20 volt, you can bet we'll be all over that as well. Still set up for our working torque test. Let's see these two head to head versus the rigid. Here's the Milwaukee on screen with the DeWalt and rigid on the graph. One sixty eight and one sixty two pretty evenly matched in this first forward test, but yeah, that rigid certainly trailing behind. While its specs at two hundred twenty five seem to say it's ready to play with the rest of the toys today, we might agree with rigid that it's in its own category, but for torque reasons, so far we'll see. Our last contender today, as we're introducing them by size, is the biggest two. It's the Makita XWT fourteen Z, a kind viewer lent to the channel to test out. While its specs are somewhat similar to the Dewalt, being two hundred forty foot pounds fastening and four hundred thirty foot pounds nut busting, its size is noticeably bigger than the five and quarter inch long Dewalt. This one's five and five eighths inch long, which is getting quite close to the mid torque category, but still shorter than some of the other cordless names sold today that are six inches and over. So not exactly egregious in that aspect. Also, we're just pulling your leg. This is a fake Makita from Alibaba. Here's the real LXT Makita. Stay tuned to see exactly what this fake makes and precisely what other kind of impact wrenches really do compare to it power-wise. Let's strap the real Makita onto our first working torque test and see what extra size does by you. Yeah, straight up off the charts here. Sorry about that. Let's take another look at this. This thing came out the gate in a hurry, then just climbs and climbs compared to the others. 240 in a five second test for cordless compact. That's new ground for us. Most air tools haven't made that. We're gonna hop right into reverse, which is an industry standard test called max torque 10 seconds. Up first is the rigid, which we're going to put up against the M12 right angle impact now, just for some extra context in the space since it seems to be playing a separate game entirely. So 155, it was able to edge out the M12 right angle it seems, but not breaking any records there. Let's see the DeWalt on screen take on the Milwaukee as well. Two hundred twenty-six over one eighty-five. That DeWalt really did impress us, especially at only 
12 volts. But here comes the Makita. Is it just a forward torque monster or can it hurt some feelings in reverse too? Three hundred and twenty nine. Three twenty nine. Yes, three twenty nine. That's a full one hundred foot pounds over the closest competition today. As usual, we do three runs on each test. But in this case, it was just to make sure we weren't losing our minds. That's like mid torque power in this test length. It's just an absolute monster. This thing is crazy. Why hasn't anyone been beating our door down to test this thing? All right. All right. Let's get into our last test. This is called best case scenario. Cordless tools can make their best runs with 15 seconds in forward or reverse, whichever is best. For the itty bitty rigid, that was reverse. Let's see it. One hundred and sixty one, not really improving past its 10 second run, and as a result, being passed by the M12 right angle, which didn't exactly blow our skirt up on its episode. Let's jump straight into the Makita to see it take on DeWalt in Milwaukee again on screen. Three thirty-seven. Well, not a whole lot up on its last run. It really does make all that torque up to three twenty, and then it's sort of done. A physical constraint of the hammer mechanism inside the tool, I'm sure, as we're really maxing out what we theorize is possible in this cordless category at this size. The gap it puts on these other tools everywhere is just insane. Of course, we're talking about a compact category here. After all, you're packaging the motor and the hammer mechanism in the same space. As you limit that space more and more it can become increasingly difficult to afford the volume and mass to both of those to result in a best combination of power. So adding back that space like Makita seems to like to do with this tool and on their chunky mid torque that was also impressive, well, that space affords you the opposite of the limitation and advantage. Yet we still doubt other brands close in size to this are as crazy powerful. After all, the DeWalt is five and a quarter inches. This is five and five eighths and made what, 30% more power? Let's see if the rank list feels the same way we do about the rigid in the Makita's performance today versus the others we've seen. Starting down here for now, their runs from today are turned into points as 11, 16, and 16, and 24, 32, and 34. Wow, what a juxtaposition that is. The rigid is very short, but also made very little beans, so that's 37.4 foot-pounds per inch. We imagine as you squeeze things tighter and tighter, it probably is hard to get a lot of juice per inch out specifically. The Makita is much longer, but yeah, beans to spare. That's 59.9 foot pounds per inch. The rigid calls out a 225 number, and that's the only number they give. And while the Milwaukee hit its 250 claim of the same nut busting flavor, rigid here is left with 72 points, 72% of their claim. The Makita advertises 240 tightening. We tightened it in reverse up to 337. So yeah, it gets full marks here, 100 points. Considering its other number that they advertise is 430, well, I wouldn't call this tool wildly underrated, just more accurate advertising those two figures like most impact guns do. The rigid costs 139 and gets 17.4 points as a function of power and price. The Makita gets 30.6, really good stuff there. That totals 169.8 and 280.5, putting the rigid in last, sorry little buddy, and the Makita in third, above some of the air options as well, and well into first place among cordless. Obviously being helped with full marks in its torque claim, but if we're ranking this category purely by average power over its run, let's see. Yep, still in third there with 277 foot pounds average across its 15 second run. But TTC, this thing's more like a mini mid torque. Well, okay, 280 points would put this LXT most of the way up on the leaderboard of our mid torque rank list as well. So really impressive either way you look at it. So what's the best compact cordless according to us? Well, probably the M12, we think. It fits into more places than the M18. It makes even more power than that M18 sometimes. Dino says bigger is better in this category, and it wasn't close power-wise, but we're working on cars where space is a premium. That said, this Makita is good enough, we think, that even if you own an M12 compact and Milwaukee batteries, 
it's worth buying a Makita and its batteries and charger to use this impact wherever an M12 doesn't fit. It brings enough beans. I mean, just look at this graph versus a well-performing mid Torx, and it may get some tasks done that nothing else cordless could. Enough so that we'll be picking one up for ourselves to keep around, although it might be in that XUT 40 volt flavor. Perhaps that brings a few extra beans? I suppose we'll find out. Subscribe to stick around for that in the future, and thank you for watching.